Educational resources are automatically copyrighted when you create them under U.S. copyright law. So let's say that I wrote a textbook, for example. I own that and nobody can use it without my permission. When we openly license that textbook, what we're doing is we're giving a license, we're giving permissions to the public to use that book under the terms of the license. Licenses are a part of the copyright system all around the world. They're used by big companies, like when a clothing manufacturer wants to sell a superhero t-shirt. And so licenses are part of the fabric of copyright law. But all of those licenses are negotiated one-to-one. -one. So when a company wants to use a text or a song or a character or part of a movie that belongs to a different rights holder, they have to have their lawyers sit down with the other lawyers and it takes time and money. So adding a Creative Commons license to a work is like saying, hey, this resource is free for you to use however you want. So the basic Creative Commons license is the CC BY license, or the Creative Commons Attribution license. And that's the most basic Creative Commons license. And all it says is you can use this work, this copyrighted thing, this photograph, this book, this song, if you attribute it to me, the creator. The reason a lot of educators and, and governments more and more are choosing that license is that the only requirement is to give proper attribution to the author, to the original creator. That's really easy to do. It also allows you to remix those works with other openly licensed works in a very easy way. And um, teachers have always given each other materials and if you know the person you're sharing the materials with, you can give them permission. But when you want to share materials with teachers across the country and potentially teachers across the world, you need a standardized way to do that. And that's what the Creative Commons licenses are.